Hi guys and welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and webdesignandtechtips.com. Well in this video today we're going to show you how to style your blog post read more buttons with a bit of custom CSS. Now as I mentioned we're using custom CSS for this today. Don't let that put you off. Any code that I write I'll put down below the video as usual. You're welcome to use it and change it to your needs. Okay, let's get started. I'm going to enable the Visual Builder. Once enabled, I'm going to go down and we'll simply delete this block right here. I'm using the blog module, so let's start from scratch. I've got a section, blue tab, with a row, green tab, single column. I'm going to add a module. Divi comes as standard with all these modules, plenty enough to build just about any site. Today I'm going to be using the blog post. There it is, blog. And let's say we'll put a dozen in there. Obviously to make this work today you need to have some posts on your site because it's pulling from the posts. And let's use category of web design. And I'm going to go over design and choose a grid layer. At the moment we've got full width which will put a sort of full width using your featured image is the default there. I'm going to put it to grid. I'll move this slightly out of the way. There we go. And it's okay. It's nothing special about it. You can go in there you can decorate it a little bit. At the moment we've got no read more button. Um, we'll put that in in a moment. So let's go back to our content. Here's our content. We set up the number of posts, what we want. Excerpt length is the amount of writing you want it to pull from the post itself. You can offset if you need to. Elements. Okay, featured image, that's fine. I want to show a read more button. And as you can see, when I've switched it on, it's got read more down there. That's okay, but it's not particularly interesting. I'd like to make that a lot more interesting. That's what we're going to do today. Um, I'm not going to show the author. Date, I'll leave. And we'll leave the categories out also. Okay. Great. Well, I'm just going to do a bit of basic styling. All I'm going to do is put a little box shadow on there to make it stand out from the page a little bit. Great. Now comes the fun part. Let's go into our advanced. Once in there, let's go down to our custom CSS. And we've got some boxes here before, main element, after, title, body, post meta, page navi, featured image, and read more button right here. Okay, first thing I want to do is give it a background color. So I'll say background, colon. And whatever hex color, you can put a hex number in there, or you can just put any color you want that's a standard web color. So I'm just using a blue there, but you can put a hex color in. Let's just get a hex color. Put that in instead if you want to. Okay, after we put that in, we need to put a semicolon before we write our next bit of code. Okay, what else do we want to do? I want to make that writing stand out a bit more, so I'm going to make it white, so I'm just going to say color. And again, you can type white if you want to, but hex code for white is FFF. Well, it's actually six Fs, but with uh, CSS3, if it's six all the same, you just need to put three in there. As you can see, we've got that white now. I think I'm going to make it uppercase. Now some of this you could actually do in the design and styling, but I'm going to go ahead and do it all with a bit of CSS here. And as usual, don't bother trying to follow along and copy what I'm doing here. You can if you want to, but it's all down. Anything I write here will be down below the video. Okay, well let's capitalize that with the text transform. Text dash transform. And we'll say uppercase. Or if you prefer, you could say capitalize, which would just give it a capital letter on the read and a capital letter on the on the more. So let's do that, for example. And as you can see, 
it's got a capital letter now on the R and the M. Let's leave that just like that. Okay, well, I want to make it a little bit fatter. And I want to push it over to the right-hand side. So let's push it over to the right-hand side because we've got more space over here. So I'm just going to say float, colon, right. And it's popped it over to the other side. Now that writing looks a little bit squashed up within that button there. So we'll put semicolon and we'll give it a bit of padding. So we'll say padding, colon. Now let's give it five picks. That's top and bottom. And I'll put another entry in and let's make that say 10 picks. 10 picks left and right. And that's looking a lot more like a button now. At least to me it looks more, a lot more like a button. If you wanted to, you could give it slightly rounded corners or fully rounded corners if you want to. So we'll put a semicolon and we can say border radius, border dash radius, colon. If you want just a small corners, give it a small value, something like five picks. And that's rounded off those corners a little bit. If you wanted it to be pill shaped, you could actually give it a large amount. Let's make that 50 picks. And as you can see, you've got pill shaped buttons there. But I really only want to throw a little curve on there so I think I'll take it down to about three picks there we go okay well that's pretty much all I want to do to my button put a semicolon on the end there but it'd be kind of nice also if when they hover over it it changed color so just up here where it says read more button if you hover over it and this is common to most Divi modules the dark legending when you hover over it some icons are going to pop up if there's a little arrow there, like there is in this case, click on it. It'll let you set a desktop state, basically how it is at the moment without your mouse on it, and a hover state, which is obviously when your mouse is on it. So when they hover on it, I'm gonna say background, different color. And again, you can just put in a color if it's a web color. And as you can see, that's that purple color. I don't really like that. Well, let's, I've got a free color Chrome color picker up here. I'm using Google Chrome. Let's make it the purple that Divi uses here. So I'm going to copy that hex code. Now let's change that to a hex number, hashtag, and then a hex code. There we go. I think that's slightly more attractive purple color, and it's more in keeping with the theme that we've got going on here. So that's pretty much all I want to do to that. If you wanted to, let's go back to the desktop state. You could give it a box shadow. Or we could just give it a box shadow on hover, perhaps. Let's go into hover. I want to say box shadow. And let's give it two picks by two picks by five picks. And let's say like 777 or something for the color. And as you can see, that's got a little box shadow around there now. When we go back to the hover, let me just put a semicolon in there. Go back to the desktop state, it's not there. There we go. Okay, well let's save our changes and see how this is gonna work on the front end. Hit the little purple button, save draft or publish if you're ready. And exit the visual builder. And there's our little button. And when we hover over it, it's going to turn purple and have a little box shadow on there. So I think that's a little more attractive than the original, just read more text there. So there you have it, guys. There's how to customize your read more button on your blog posts. I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, comment, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Once again, this has been Jamie with System22 and WebDesignAndTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.